Hey folks, Alex with Bay Cities Construction. Hey, we're back in Cyprus. Last week we were here with our engineers. We marked off the sections that they want opened up. And today we're here with our crew opening up the building to make sure that we understand what the site conditions are. So let me show you why it is so important to do a limited demo discovery on the building. You gotta check it out, come on. We're back, it's been a week. The guys got in here this morning and opened up some stuff. We're gonna show you different parts of the building. So the building's got a few components that we need to make sure we understand what the site conditions are. The drag line beam that's above us, the orthogonal walls, the bases of the orthogonal walls, and the entire drag line of the building. We wanna know if the drag line beam is steel or if it's actual lumber. We wanna know what the connections, how it's connected to the wall, how it's connected. The drag line beam is connected to posts and uh, columns. And that's all part of what we're doing today. We're opening up so that we can have a better understanding of what else we need to fix in addition to installing a lateral element. But let's talk about what's going on here. This is a structural member. It's an orthogonal wall. This is uh, the rebar we exposed a little bit because it was cracked, so we just opened it up to see. There's a little bit of rust in the column. How bad that is, we don't know, but see this crack right here? An earthquake will break anything that's weak, and pipe columns will bend here at the base where they're going to the ground. This mud sill, there is a bolt there, that's good. The problem is that they notched out this big wall stud, and then there's absolutely no plywood. There's no plywood shear on either side of this wall. So this wall, although it carries a gravity load, it's not a very good lateral resisting wall. We have to deal with that. In this case, the engineers are probably gonna call for the stucco removal and then the installation of new anchor bolts and new plywood she shear, but we'll see. We're gonna share this info with them and it'll be up for them to determine that. So let's go over to the exterior wall because this one has got some crazy damage. So this is an orthogonal wall that is an end wall, right? So it's kind of really important. This base here, there's a lot going on. This is a big four by eight member that's been completely termite damaged. It's actually not touching the ground anymore. So that means that a lot of its load is sitting on these bolts right here. The biggest issue is here that it's, it's not touching the ground. See, I could stick about three inches of my knife. In an earthquake, when you start getting lateral force this way, it's very easy to predict that post is actually gonna crack in half. Now behind here, there is a shear uh, plywood, but it's it's been exposed to water damage. It's really soft. This is one of the reasons it's so important to do these limited demo and discovery because the earthquake is going to find every weakness in the building. We could put some amazing new moment frames and all sorts of new timber and lumber up in the uh, floor system, but if the bases are no good, everybody knows you need a good foundation in order to have a solid house. So let's go to the other part of the building and let's go see what the dragline beams look like. By the way, if you see these little dots, it's my way of marking there's gonna be a moment frame. And then this is the direction of the beam. That could change based on a few factors. If we find any infrastructure that's gonna be in the ground within the footprint of the grade beam, we gotta move the location because many times, well, we cannot stick any gas lines in there and sewer lines can't be in the grade beam either. So it becomes problematic. Choosing where the grade beam is gonna be is a very important part of this process. And that's why we have to open up the walls to make sure we understand what's in there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to map out the sewer connections. So let's check out this area here. We're at another building in the complex. We've opened up the connection between the drag line beam and the rest of the building. And let me show you what we found out. So we're looking at the drag line beam, it's an I-beam. And this is a pin connection. This is the wall framing here. You notice there's a kind of a top plate over it. There's probably bolts being connecting the, that to the ivy. It's hard to say, we gotta open up a little bit more. As you can see, there is plywood on the exterior of this wall. The question always becomes, what is the condition of the bases of these plywood? 
at the base. There's no real bolt there. There's no significant damage on the base of this. We're always looking for stuff like this. This is kind of a knot that blew out. There's real wide checks on the surface of the plywood. You know, it indicates that there's, they're dry, right? You always wonder how much deterioration there is in the strength of the plywood when you have big wide checks like that. Let's go over to the corner and see what it looks like. This thing is notched. Pretty much every damn joist at the end of the shear wall is notched for, for this little nut and bolt. Here, you've got your pipe column connecting to your ivy, and you've got like a mechanical connection that was welded. The next thing we're looking for is, is this connection here, the top of the wall. And then ultimately, what's the quality of the connection between the top plate and the floor joist for the second floor? All right, so let's go take a look. We've opened up a couple of other sections on the other side of the building. And uh, let's take a look at what that looks like. So we're on the outside of the shear wall, and I want to show you something. The corners of shear walls are important. See how brittle this is? It's also pretty thin, you know? It's not nailed very well. It really needs to be nailed good around its perimeter. It's an old building, you know? We're not expecting it to be perfect, but there's critical sections of the building that do need to be in really good shape in order for the building to perform. So you can see we've got, it's a huge building. We got the guys working all the way over there. Let's go see what they're up to. So we're on the other side of the building now. We are taking a look at the cantilevers over the garages. And we were expecting to see some termite damage caused by maybe a window leak and stuff. So we opened it up and we wanted to have a true understanding of what's going on. So this is what we found. This is your what we consider the drag line beam, okay? It's an I-beam. Above it is a top plate. And then if you come from this direction, you can see this is a cantilever two by 12. And you see how it's all twisted out? Well, this is caused by torsion. The connection between the floor system and the rim is, it's bad all the way along the entire line pretty much it's, it's separated on this little section this little gym here actually cracked out that's basically a failure of the rim i guess the guys were trying to save nails back in the day i mean that's got maybe two nails where i'm holding it up so they'll peel it back and we'll take a look at it let's look at some of this nailing over here it's got one nail there and one on top that's it even though they're double they're double and it's only got one nail. I hope you learned as much as we did from opening up this property. It's an important part of the process and it's something that your contractor should do. If you want to learn more about software retrofitting, please visit us at softwareretrofitpros.com. And if you're following us on YouTube, please, we're gonna, we need to hit a thousand subscribers. So smash that subscribe button. If you're following us on Facebook, obviously like us. We post a show every week on construction related topics. My name is Alex with Bay Cities Construction, software retrofit pros, reminding you, you don't need a contractor, you need a team of pros. Software retrofit pros, number one.